Hey there, I'm Bill DeYoung with the St. Pete Catalyst. Thanks for joining us tonight for Catalyst Sessions. We have uh, Carla Hartley as our guest. Carla Hartley has been a major player in the Tampa Bay arts community, the theater community, for more than 25 years as an actor, director, stage manager, and production manager, and probably all sorts of other things that we don't even know about. Since 2013, she has been the executive and artistic director at Stageworks Theater, the wonderful equity house over there in Tampa, across the bay from us, part of the arts community. Welcome, please, Carla Hartley. Are you there? I see me, I don't see Carla. Hey, there you are. Hi. The, the wonders of technology bring us together. Right. How are you tonight? <laughs> I'm hanging in there, you know, it's been a weird, weird couple of weeks, but uh, we're hanging in. Let's talk about where stage work uh, was on the timeline exactly when this current situation began. Um, well, um, we uh, were heading into tech for a play called 12 Angry yes. Men, which uh, it was meant to open on the 20th of March um, for a minute might be able to, to keep going uh, because at the time the um, uh, restrictions from the CDC were 250 people and above should not gather together but shortly after that it was um, uh, it was changed to 50 people and we knew at that point that uh, we were not going to be able to uh, keep going safely um, we wanted to make sure that yeah. our the safety of our patrons and actors were was our utmost concern so uh, on the 13th, um, I think we all, um, most of the theaters around the Bay Area, um, all maybe, I forget, um, decided to uh, go ahead and postpone um, the season. And, you know, it's, uh, it's hard. We, um, we, were, we have a set there sitting ready and, and waiting for actors to step on it. Um, and uh, we're hopeful that once um, the restrictions are lifted, we'll be able to continue with that production. So what you've got essentially is 12 angry actors going, we really want to do this show, you know, and there was that thing. I want to talk in a minute about the letter you wrote this week, but there was a thing about how, you know, the show must go on. It's a corny old cliche, but when you've put so much into a production, you know, you'll, you'll go hell or high water to make it happen. There's, there's no contingency plan. Is there for something like this? You just could not have planned this. Yeah, no. I mean, we. Um, this is absolutely unprecedented for us as well as everybody else in the country and the world. Um, you know, I've we've never um, postponed an opening before, uh, uh, so it's 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 an un, it's an unusual situation to be in. We're not quite sure how to act for the first little bit, um, but. Uh, you know, it's not only that, you know, and yes, we put a lot of money into the production that, you know, we're sort of sitting there hoping that we'll be able to recoup at some point. But, you know, the sort of emotional energy and the artistic energy that goes into the work that we do um, is uh, is really where it's at for us. And to sort of have that uh, um, amputated, I guess, um, yeah. it's uh, it's really weird. It's really weird. That is, that's that amputation, I suppose, is, is a correct use of that because it's sort of like that old feeling that, you know, my leg was taken off in the war. This is not true, by the way, but I mean, I can, I still, it still itches sometimes. It's like, if you're in a play, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night doing your lines. And, you know, if you're in the middle of a run of something, and I know you know this feeling, it becomes so much of you. Um, let, 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 let me ask you about the the rest of the season. So we're talking about, my gosh, Anna in the Tropics mm -hmm. and the Putnam County Spelling Bee. I mean, have you had to make the decision now that they're not happening? Um, well, it's all on hold for the moment. Um, I'm not prepared to make any official announcements about what the status of, of all that is. Um, uh, it's, it's difficult. Um, we are... Uh, Looking at a number of different options, um, we're not able to, you know, a lot of people are talking about live streaming and all of that sort of thing. Um, we're not able to do that. There are a lot of contractual um, notions from both the, the the people who hold the rights to the play. And, oh, yeah, uh, right. 
actors equity and all of that stuff that makes a, makes that really sort of impossible, certainly for a theater of our size. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're knocking around a number of possibilities. Um, and uh, I would expect that you'd hear something more official for that. I know that David ended up canceling his last two productions today, Jobside Theater. Um, David at Jobside, um, yeah, I, I saw that, yeah. So we're, yeah, so, um, you know, we're still working on it, uh, working on budgets and things, and budget projections, so, uh, which is really hard because you have no idea what's going to happen, but, um, yeah, you know, we're, we're still yeah. working it out. Okay. Let me be blunt and, and, and ask, and you can answer this however you want, you know, what kind of a financial hit potentially can you be taking here? I did talk with David Jenkins about this quite extensively. Um, well, I mean, you have to, I know nobody wants to think worst case scenario and God knows I don't want to be the grim angel of, of failure here, but, you right. know, but I think, you know, approximately if this goes on a long time, you're going to lose some dough, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we have um, we have at the moment about twenty five thousand dollars into Twelve Angry Men. Um, yeah. That then we're not any of that money uh, recouped, um, you know. And then you know, typically speaking, for each stage, for each um, production, certainly later in the season, where the more accessible titles are uh, in the season, we would typically get, you know. 30 some odd thousand dollars in taking revenue from each show, each production. So, you know, we're certainly looking at a hundred and some odd thousand dollars in losses that, um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be really challenging. So. Is StageWorks independent? I, you know, the job site is part of the Strauss Center. Uh, are, are you totally independent? Are you connected with, you know, St. Pete College or something. What's what's your deal? No, we're entirely independent, and that's you know, in addition to ticketing revenue, I still have hard costs that um, you know, like electricity and uh, various yeah. uh, contracts that we have for the copier and all of this other stuff. So, you know, there are hard costs for the organization that add up to you know a fairly significant amount of money per month. Um, we're at the you know making sure that our people are getting paid, um, even in the mm -hmm. absence of um, of of revenue, uh, so we're, it's a lot. So, so you figure if we don't finish out the season and we got no more income at all, um, probably, you know, 150,000 bucks. And we also rent the facility a lot. And then we get a lot of, we get a lot of revenue from rentals. We have a couple of churches that use the space. So while, sure. while we're not able to do, we're not able to get that money in either. So it's, um, <clears throat> It's it's going to be difficult. This is the Catalyst session. We're talking with Carla Hartley, who is the executive and artistic director of Stageworks Theater. Hi, Cindy Stovall. Hi, Cindy. She's writing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Carla, Carla and I are talking about um, the immediate future of Stageworks, what it looks like. And uh, I wanted to ask you this. You wrote this impassioned open letter that was published. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of extolling the virtues and benefits of live theater to society it was near and dear to my heart. I understand all that and urging us not to allow, I like what you said, not to allow this to become the new normal. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what you meant? Um, you know, what we do as artists is, um, is dependent on human interaction. Mm. Um, and, uh, while you and I are talking over the waves of whatever, um, uh, it's not the same whatever. as having someone in the room next to you trying to do the work that you do. And I think that we've seen over the last X number of years, how society is sort of fractured and siloed in ways that keep us apart from one another, whether that be ideological or political or religious or any of those, those yeah. isms. Um, that we take on ourselves. And um, part of what the arts does is bring us all together and uh, put us all in the same room. And one of the great values of live performance is that you're sitting next to someone who is not like you and who you can sit and engage with in conversation. Yeah. Uh, we are removed from person to person human communication, 
um, the more likely it is that um, sort of there's, there'll be a rise of narcissism and a, a waning of empathy. And I think empathy is really where the art lands in terms of how we can be helpful um, to move forward through this crisis and um, to be sure that it's not me against you, but it's us against something. So um, us, we're, us against it, I suppose. Uh, yeah. yeah, us against it, whatever it is, right? Um, well, the theater, so, you know, that's that's beautifully said. A shared experience, mm -hmm. you know, and and through kind of an unreality, we go there together. We we all come out changed on the other end. That's what I like about arts. You know, you're affected by something, and it makes you different. It's nice to have that as a shared experience. It's very nice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's it's not even just the performative element of it, but we do a lot of teaching in the community, bringing arts to yeah. young people who don't have access to it. Um, so, and we're losing that as well, just based on the fact that we can't gather together in groups of more than 10 people. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, my fear is that, um, you know, people become accustomed to being sort of holed up in their houses and, and so... Uh, and uh, mm. all day, uh, when they could be out, you know, engaging in experiences that make a difference rather than something that they can look at that they could repeat over and over again in the same exact way that they see it uh, the first time that they see it. Um, one of the great about theater is that you can come to see a play on opening night and then come to see the same play on closing night, and it's the same. It's it's a different experience. Not going to it'll be yeah. Roughly the same, but it's not going to be the same exact experience. So it's an it's an organism. It's it's the, you know it's Absolutely. it's it again it sounds like a cliche, but it's like a living, breathing thing. You know, one sure. one of the things that I, I've been thinking about, and I was talking with Matthew McGee about this very thing, is that in the healing process, mm -hmm. as we come out of this, God knows when it happens, the arts are going to be even more important. You know, to remind us of the, the beauty and the humanity and the empathy that is, you know, and, and so maybe what you're saying won't happen that I'm not staying on my couch. First thing I'm doing is coming to stage works to see 12 angry men, which I was in once. <laughs> Let's talk about that up in Savannah. Once upon a time. <laughs> but well, the arts, the arts, are, it's such a valuable part of life. And I, 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 I suspect that we're going to see that. You know, maybe people who haven't thought about it so much like, God, I can't believe I haven't gone to a concert in however long it's been. I haven't seen a live play. God, it feels good. You People take it for granted yeah. sometimes. Yeah, and it should really feel like the clouds are open and the sun is shining. And that's what the arts are. They shine a light on society and a light on humanity that um, is important for all of us to see. Uh, you know... I, I really believe in the notion of the artist as historian. Mm -hmm. I think everything that we know about the, about the world around us and ancient civilization, we know because somebody wrote a play about it, somebody painted a painting about it, somebody wrote a story. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, the Institute sort of took that sort of live action um, uh, his, footage that can serve as a historical um uh, no notion in the future. So, and I and I think that as as artists sort of uh, engaged in what's happening right now and the dark the the darkness of what this is, um, it'll it'll serve as a record for uh, generations to come about what this time was like and um, how we were able to move through it with generosity and um, and a spirit of willfulness that um, will be helpful to everybody as we come to the other side of it. The other side, from, from you know, from your mouth to God's ear. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna change tack here for a second. Sure. Uh, you, you you talked in your letter about doing like stage work staycations, like checking in with staff members. Like here I am at home, playing with my cats. Or are you gonna yeah. you're gonna you're thinking about ways to like you say you can't do full shows or are you are you right. working on methods to stay in touch? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've asked a number of performers um, of, with whom I'm familiar and who've worked with us before to send in a self-tape that we'll share yeah. on Facebook and Instagram, those sorts of things. Um, uh, Alison Burns sort of 
kicked it out of the park with her. She made a whole music video of. Oh, that was of, great. Um, of something Corona. which was really fun. <laughs> She's working on great. another one. Um, yeah. So, and you know, I'm hopeful that we'll we'll get so we'll do some some play readings, some new plays where we can actually contact the artists and get permission to do it on a live stream. Um, so those sorts of things to keep the arts alive and in people's lives. And um, I'm not gonna lie, keep Stageworks out there as a as an entity mm -hmm. so that people remember that we exist. And um, so you know, we're we're trying to do a lot of different things. I'm gonna have. Um, uh, our drumming instructors coming in tomorrow. We're gonna uh, tape a. We're gonna videotape a, a drumming class, the a drumming instruction Excellent. from him that we're gonna put out. Um, so we're trying in many different ways to figure out how to make sure the arts are still accessible um, in whatever way that we can. I think that ultimately, sort of a digital medium is um, is dissatisfying. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> But, Good um, seeing you too. But yes, no, I, I understand that totally. Sure. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's to be in a, the same room with a teacher is not the same as being on, seeing a teacher over Zoom, right? Um, which yeah. has also been weird because I teach at the University of Tampa, and I've had to try to figure out how to teach, um, you know, a cabaret class or my stage management class, um, and not be in the same room with the uh, with the singer and the and the accompanist and it's very very weird and i don't know what to do but katrina um, stevenson told me the other day that you know how do i teach costume design this way you know it's very hands-on there's no hands no hands exactly. nothing yeah so it's been it's it's a new landscape but i'm hopeful that we won't be in it for too long and we can all return to our regularly scheduled programs um, as soon as possible, you know, being mindful that we all want to stay healthy and we want our audiences to be healthy. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're trying to make sure that we are uh, keeping those out there, keeping people entertained, even if it's just for a, a 15 second knock knock joke that, cause we did a, a we did a whole series of knock knock jokes on the set of uh, 12 Angry Men, finding different ways to use the set of 12 Angry Men, uh, um, that don't involve 12 actors on stage with us. But uh, so those will we'll sort of let those out little by little over the next couple of weeks and see, yeah. um, see how uh, how we can have a little fun while we're all trapped in our homes. Well, you know, the, what you said was a, a big part of why we're doing this at the Catalyst is because it just occurred to us that, hey, well, you know, we're all still here. The arts community is still here. We're just in little little freaky weird little pockets now we're not together in rooms as you say let's yeah. let's try and stay connected you know and so it's really good to talk to you someone just wrote in robin wrote in and mentioned your direction of fun home and american stage last season which was yeah. it was a phenomenal show you were directing 12 angry men too right uh no actually rosemary orlando was directing 12 angry men oh uh, okay so i'm yeah I don't typically direct in the spring because there's so many grant deadlines and stuff like that. Um, Busy life. Do at the top. I don't want to like, I tend to really silo when I'm directing something. So I, I yeah. work on it almost to the exclusion of other things. Um, so uh, no, but Rosemary was doing a great job and we were about to open that play and, and hopefully we still will. Well, what I was going to say is part of that, you were in Morningside at Stage Works. Uh, morning, yeah. yeah, which was uh, a, a hoot and a holler, as they say. And Joe, if you're there, I was hoping you could bring up a photograph to lead into something that I wanted to ask Carla. If if Joe is Joe Hamilton, there he is. Uh, can you see uh, that photo? That's five lesbians. Well, that's five, five lesbians, lesbians eating a quiche. That's Carla yeah. there on the on the far right there. So <laughs> that was that was a yeah, that was a great please. show, by the way. So yeah. what I wanted to ask you, in actually in closing today, is is um you know, the chicken or the egg question. I mean, you're a director and an actor. What do you like better? Oh, I'm a control freak. So I much prefer <laughs> to direct a play. And honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I, I, I had a really lovely time with Morningside and I had fun with, with, with five lesbians. Um, I, I just, I have a attention span that I might like. Um, so I'm good to sort of do a thing for three weeks and let it open and let it fly and do its own, own 
live its own life. Um, it was really strange yeah. for me to stick with a play the, for the next three weeks. Um, but I had a great time and I, I, you know, I enjoy acting. What I, what I think is most valuable about it for me is that um, I, I need to be reminded every now and then what I ask actors to do. And the only way I can really remind myself of that is to step in and do it myself. You know, I ask actors to do really hard things. I ask them to sort of open their chest and show the world their heart. And, uh, and it's good for me to be reminded of what, of what exactly the toll is of that, the emotional energy, the spiritual oh, energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Um, so that I can be more mindful as I ask actors to do things that... Um, uh, what exactly it is that I'm asking. So that's that's why I like to do it every now and then. I also have a, a super great time with those ladies on stage and in both of those productions. And morning side. It was so fun. I hope it's not the last <laughs> performance on the stage, but um, well, I will see. I'm I'm sure it's I'm sure it's not. Um, there was one thing that I was going to ask, and it's totally gone out of my head. Oh. Oh, uh, no, I, it had to do with the Hispanic Initiative, because I was, uh -huh. Anna in the Tropics, which won the Pulitzer Prize, is is so brilliant, and you were yeah. going to do it in English, the same cast, in English and in Spanish, and because and, uh, we have a few minutes left, can, can you just describe the Hispanic Initiative, because that it's so important what you do at Stageworks. Yeah, I mean, uh, three years ago, I want to say, um, it, I, it started to really land on my heart that um, that we're coming up on, I think, 30% of our population is uh, Latin, of Latin descent. Um, and yeah. uh, we wanted to make sure that we weren't leaving that segment of our community out. So um, we decided to um, to do the Hispanic Initiative, which is multi, was multi-faced, but um, the, the you know most prominent face of it is to do these plays, both in English and in Spanish. Um, yeah. Started off with um, in the time of the butterflies and oh yeah five, right five performances in Spanish and I'll, I'll be fair and honest and say I had no idea how it was going to go I just mm. really didn't know um, but and, how did it go oh it went it, like crazy like cool it was really great so you got and, a Spanish speaking uh, audience to come out and see it finish that yeah. run the Spanish language absolutely um by the time we finished that run the, the four of the five performances in spanish had sold out sold clean um which was um terrific for us to, to know that people really wanted the programming yeah. um so last year we did sort of a, a a play that was inherently bilingual which was uh, four guys named jose and una mujer named mm -hmm. maria a musical um, and uh, this was Anna in the Tropics, which is a Florida playwright. It's about Ybor City, so it's really close to us in terms of where our facility is to Ybor City. Um, and and we've all we also initiated a um, a middle school program called Hispanic American Greats that did sort of short bio mo bio biographical monologues of prominent Hispanic Americans in history. Um, and this upcoming season, um, uh, hopefully. Um, and you know, finance is willing. Um, we're gonna start a a, a, a short uh, like a Saturday morning, um, uh, short plays for young for young for young audiences, um, in Spanish. That's um, great. No one else is doing this, are they? Uh, nope. That's fantastic. Mm, no, I mean, uh, a couple of theaters in Florida have begun to do that. Oh, Mad Cow was doing some readings in Spanish. Um, but uh, uh, we were doing it first. But um, no one else in the Tampa Bay area, I'm saying, because as you say, 30% of the population oh, for sure. uh, in Tampa and Hilver, there's a, right. a lot of uh, Spanish speaking people over there. It's a beautiful thing. Well, and you know, Spanish lyric theater um, has been around for a long, long time. And yeah, that's right. Great that's right. Well. Um, but they're, they're focused mostly on musicals um, and Zazuelas yeah. and stuff like that. So we wanted to make sure that we were doing a legit theater in, in Spanish so that um, we could um, offer that to a large segment of our community that we have all, all, all been sort of missing. Well, I think that's going to about do it for today. Carla, it's so great to see you and to talk to you again and uh, to check in. Keep us posted. And uh, we'll look forward to, Thanks. you know, we'll what's go. coming next. Yep, for sure. Thanks very much, Bill. I appreciate your yeah, time. Absolutely.
So I'm Bill DeYoung, and this has been the Catalyst Sessions. And I will remind you, uh, as I uh, try to always do, to check out St. Pete Catalyst, which is stpetecatalyst.com, which is uh, an online news platform that you can get absolutely free, covering all kinds of Bay Area news between business and community and the arts. And of course, now, at the moment, it's pretty much all about, you know, what's going on now. But we are here for you, and we'll be here tomorrow at 7 o'clock with singer-songwriter Cassandra Rose, by the way, who's going to do a couple songs for us. So I'm Bill DeYoung, and it's been great, and we will see you Tuesday.